Now for this sky, I am back to my blocking for paper. I'm back on an A3 sheet of paper, but this one is going to take me a few minutes because I've got to wet and wet and wet. I want it really soggy. I've not taped it, uh, and it's going to go a bit wonky with the amount of water I'm going to put on there, and then it's going to flatten back out again. So I'm starting off wetting one side. Then I wet the other side. You can see the paper's beginning to let's just click you up a little. You can see this paper is beginning to curl a little. We need to get work past that. So I'm just going to make sure the back side is thoroughly wet as well. And what's the point of all this wetting? Well, the wetter the paper, the more time we've got to play with. So I'm coming back to this side and wetting again. Can you see that curling up has pretty much all gone now? I don't have my paper taped down, but it's wet enough to be stuck to my board because it's just doing that on sheer suction. And this should give us a bit more time because this is going to be a bit more complex, this one. So, start off with a blue wash. I'm just going to clean space in my palette for this. I don't want a grey wash, I want a blue wash. So I'm going to use a mix of my ultramarine and a more intense blue. It could be cobalt, it could be thalo, it could be peacock blue. Depends on what brand of paints you're using. And it's a mixture of the two. I actually need a reasonable amount of this. So I'm starting with this at the top. I'm just gently running my brush backwards and forwards. Going to come down to around about halfway. You can see that the colour is running out. So I've cleaned my brush. I'm coming down to my Crinacridone Gold. I'm going to have that at the bottom here and I'm going to run that up. Until that runs out. So I brought my blue down to about halfway. I've brought this up about a third. I'm just going to clean some puddles off the edge just so I don't drip everywhere. So about half the blues come down. That's come up about a third and I've got this almost white area in the middle. So. to mix a sort of golden colour so I'm going to use some quinacridone gold and some of this red here. I think that's a naphthol red. So I'm making this beautiful rich gold colour. And I'm going to come across Here. And then I'm going 
going to take some water and dilute that a little bit so that my colour is more muted. Okay, I'm now going to change my brush. I'm going over to my number eight round. Same colour. This just allows me to make some smaller marks. And as we come into the corner, I'm going to make my shadow colour which is my sky colour with some, so it's those two blues with some uh, umber into that as well. Bringing this down on the other side. Now the more you wet the paper the longer you have but there's still a limited time. I'm just going to take my damp brush now and just move this around a little bit so I'm washing my brush I'm drying it out on the cloth and I'm just using that to move this around a little bit I'm going to lift a little out from here too so again thirsty brush Uh, I've still got enough moisture in the picture to do this. Coming back down to my orangey colour, the gold and the red. Just want to add some little extra flashes. Within that. And then down here as well. So a nice strong mix of this. As before, wash my brush, dry it, and just move some of this colour around where I want it to be. Make some little marks. I'd like to lift a few more bits out from here whilst I still have the time. Right, so I'm going to use, put some rose into my ultramarine and brown mix, warm that up a little bit, drop some of that in there. Spread those out.
see I've still got plenty of moisture on the paper. Bringing these clouds down. I'm just picking this, these orangey colours up from here and just dropping some of those in. of the blue and the orange giving me these nice shaded colours of my distant clouds. Let's move a little something here. Now the reason this is more complicated is because you're trying to get a lot more done in the time before everything dries. So you kind of have to plan things a little more. Another thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a tissue just lift that out. The other thing I'm going to do is use my tissue to drag a couple of crepuscular rays thing I'm not sure about is I've got this kind of little lump here. Can I adjust that slightly? Now I can see I'm beginning to dry off up here so I have to work quickly and carefully. I have just about run out of time. So I'm going to dry this off now. Now as this is the most complicated sky, I'm going to do the suitless foreground. I'm just going to have a little look and see if there's any bits I want to tweak. Now it's dry, I can come back in and, and do a little tweak. Got to remember to soften these edges ever so gently. I don't think I really want to 
tweak that very much. I quite like that. So I'm going to come over to my foreground. So hopefully you can all see that. So I need quite a dark colour. So you could just use a, a Payne's Grey. I still prefer my mix of blue and brown. And the reason is I never mix up enough of it. So by keep making just those two colours as dark as I can, uh, the dark isn't boring because it's not just an absolutely flat colour. So I'm going to... work quickly because I don't want edges to dry off. So remember this is just my blue-brown mix. So sometimes the mix I pick up is a little more blue, sometimes it's a little more brown, and that's all good. Now I'm fading this out slightly as we come forward, but not so much. Still need some more colour here. I'll just take this on so I can work a little bit down here. I'm going to try a little experiment with some magic sponge. I'm going to cut myself a little bit of this off and I'm just going to wet the edge. Now the magic sponge is it's in a magic er eraser. Just spraying it with a little water. My water pot was a little bit grubby so I'm just going to spray it with a little water. does make the sponge obviously it's lifting paint out and it lifts it beautifully but you can see it, it comes onto the end there so I'm just cleaning that off so just wiping that off It's just trying it a different way. It's just using a slightly different technique. Coming back to my blue brown mix.
trees is coming down on this side. It's just a darker line, so I'm going to use that as my tree line. Nice if you stayed still for a few minutes. Let's bring you in a little bit. I'm adding just a touch of green in places. A touch of that lemon yellow just to, with the grey, that gives a really nice sort of green colour. There we go, I think that'll be fine.